Hello everyone, my name is Pixelriffs and welcome back to the Minecraft Survival Guide. I hope you're all having a good day. In today's episode, we are back at the site of our moss dig where I have now cleared out all of the ores from the entire chunk. And as you can see, it looks pretty colourful up there. We've actually got the geode up there in the wall, just that kind of corner chunk that we cut off the geode. We've got little bits of moss dappling the place, even a couple of light sources where I place some torches as it gets dark. But we don't need to worry about whether it's light or dark because we are going into the deepest, darkest place in the entirety of Minecraft. We're going to step into the ancient city that we dug into in the previous episode and explore. Even though we have one of these basically underneath the mountain right next to our base, I decided that we'd check out this one first and that can prepare us for raiding the one that is a little bit closer to home. Before all of that though, I want to show you this because I have left all of the ores in the walls of this chunk so you can still see a few exposed diamond ores. There might be a few more emeralds up there. There's definitely a little patch of diamond right there where that massive ore vein was. But I removed the rest of these on the live stream like I said I was going to and it filled up a shulker box with the amount of stuff that we got. Now, of course, the majority of that is going to be coal ore from the heights of the mountain. We have a decent amount of iron, a couple of stacks of copper ore in there as well, a quarter stack of emerald ore, which I'm really very happy with, and almost half a stack of deep slate diamond. Shuffling these around into something that slightly closer resembles an order of some sort. There we go. We have this much coal. It's almost half the shulker box is coal, but then we got a decent amount of iron ore. We got four stacks and a little bit extra in the deep slate. We got two stacks of copper ore and one extra left over and a decent amount of redstone, gold, lapis, and everything else. So that's going to get tucked away in the ender chest now. And the reason that I'm standing in this tray of water is that I basically built a giant scaffold all the way up through the center of the chunk. We left this water stream down here with hoppers in the center, collecting all of the ores that dropped down because I was fairly certain I wouldn't be able to collect them all if I just let them fall on the ground down here. And collecting the ores from the top down would mean that some of the blocks would fall onto the blocks below and there was no way I was going to be able to collect all of them with how random items sometimes move in Minecraft. So that's what I ended up doing. Ended up with a little water catchment area here, the same way we do with our mob farm. And that worked out spectacularly well. Now, in order to get up into the ancient city, we are, of course, going to have to pillar up a little bit here and then break out this last little section so that we can make our way in. And I'm going to need to dip into my shulker box. And the netherite hoe, despite the fact that it has been used so much, still has over 160 durability, which with unbreaking two means it's probably going to last for a little while. So I'm going to bring this with us because it has silk touch and that will allow us to acquire some of the blocks that we're going to need to use a hoe on here in the ancient city. Like these skulk sensors right here by the entrance. Right now, these aren't really doing anything to alert any skulk shriekers, so I'm not too worried about their presence here, but it is going to be helpful to remove some of these so that we don't end up triggering the warden in other areas of the city, so a silk touch hoe is going to be a good idea. The other thing I have brought with me in a great supply here is wool blocks. I've chosen a couple of colors that are really going to stand out here in the ancient city environment alongside all of these cyan and darker color palette blocks. Having some orange or yellow is really going to stick out like a sore thumb. And that's the idea because we're going to be exploring by stepping on wool. You'll notice around here that if we tread on the wool blocks of this pathway, if I even if I end up jumping on a couple of these wool blocks here and there, we are not triggering the skulk sensors similar to how we are if we walk around on the, the other blocks nearby. And that is not a proximity thing either, because right here I'm directly underneath the skulk sensors. That is really just the fact that wool occludes the sound of player footsteps. Now, if you don't have a wool farm set up already, there are a couple of options that you have. You can, of course, turn some iron into shears and pick up some of the wool that is in these pathways. Obviously, in some areas where the pathway is not as thick, you risk exposing some blocks that are going to make some noise. But around here, a lot of the pathways are made out of double thick layers of wool blocks, and that affords the player the opportunity to go around with a stack of wool that you've collected using shears. The skulk sensors also won't detect you breaking these wool blocks, so that's a really great way of gathering a bunch of wool and using it to escape detection from the skulk sensors. The other thing you can do, of course, is to sneak around everywhere, but that is both slower and is going to be harder to avoid detection from skulk sensors if you want to open up some of the chests that are going to be in some of these side rooms. And believe me, the loot in these ancient cities is something you will want to check out. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is grab some of the yellow wool that I brought with me, and we're going to make a little pathway out here. I can always do a couple of sprint jumps in case I want this to cover a little bit more ground. And we're going to make for this first little alcove over here. I'm going to hold shift whenever I feel like I need to because... I especially need to in here. What we got here is a little collection of two skulk shriekers and a skulk sensor or two right there. And the goal here is to prevent the skulk shriekers from hearing us, from detecting any skulk sensor vibrations that occur nearby. So I think one of the things we're going to do quickly here before we get started is to cordon off any of the skulk shriekers around here. We'll put a block on top of this one as well. We'll put a block behind there and we will surround this one on three sides with wool blocks. I'm also going to pillar up over here just to make sure that there aren't any skulk sensors that are going to detect us on the other side of this wall because that one there I think is just out of range to send a signal to this skulk shrieker. I don't think it's going to make it through that wool block there because when we open this chest any of these skulk sensors that trip the skulk shriekers in the vicinity are going to give us our first strike with the warden but hopefully if I have done my job right, if we open this up, there we go. We ended up with no Skulk Shriekers alerted, and that's a very good thing. That means that the theory is sound and that we can apply this to other Skulk Shriekers and sensors that we find alongside these loot chests. Because take a look at what's in these loot chests. For a start, we have a bunch of coal. That's going to be useful for us planting torches around here a little bit later. We've got some Skulk Catalysts, which are nice ways of spreading the Skulk blocks in future if we want them. We have a couple of fragments of a music disc, and this is kind of a puzzle that you can kind of put together over the course of your Ancient City raid. You can collect music disc fragments, and once you have enough of those, they can be turned into a secret music disc that can only be acquired here. We've also got some soul torches which are just really for atmosphere down here a saddle and some books so nothing too special in this chest i'm going to go ahead and mark that with an orange wool to say that we have opened that and that nothing else in there is really worth us having for the moment now as you can see there are a couple of pairings of skulk sensors and shriekers around here that will be a little bit difficult to defuse the one thing i need to make sure of in this case is that there are no other skulk shriekers nearby these sensors and it doesn't look like there are so i'm going to break the skulk shrieker in this case and even though that relayed sound to the other sensors over there we didn't trip any other shriekers in the city so that's really the approach you need to take here if you see a bunch of skulk sensors and shriekers near each other and it doesn't look like you'll be able to just break one then you need to surround one or the other of them with wool in order to make sure that the vibrations do not transfer if you just see one shrieker next to a bunch of sensors or just one sensor next to a bunch of shriekers, you can just break the one that is all on its own and that should allow you to escape detection. Once you are certain an area is safe, I'm also going to recommend popping down a torch nearby so you can light up an area and your progress through the ancient city will be a little bit more visible through the use of light sources that you brought in from the outside. The torches here are going to be brighter than the soul lanterns that you will find decorating these halls, so the presence of the wool there plus the extra light, it's pretty clear that we have been that way already. I'm going to go the opposite way now. We're going to head out in this direction and we're going to see what is behind this wall here. We're going to see if there's a situation here that we can defuse and it seems like this area is pretty much in the clear in terms of skulk sensors and shriekers combining but on the other side of the wall here we have a couple of sensors that are potentially going to relay a signal to that shrieker up there so there are a couple of things we can do to make sure that opening this chest does not get us detected by these sensors so one thing i can do is head down here and place some wool blocks around the faces of the skulk sensors that i feel are most likely to receive that vibration including over the top and having enclosed those from any vibrations hopefully i should be able to open up this chest and there we go only these sensors in this room are detecting me the ones outside in the corridor are not and normal stone will allow those vibrations to pass through but wool will not so we've managed to successfully defend ourselves from being heard in that case and this chest has some very exciting stuff in it. We've got a bunch more books and a couple of enchanted books, including a new enchantment, Swift Sneak 3. That can be applied to your leggings to allow you to crouch, walk almost as fast as you can run normally. So that's a really good book to have. We're going to be applying that to our leggings. We also have our first enchanted golden apple, which spawn with a much greater frequency here in ancient cities than they do anywhere else. We've got a regeneration 2 potion and a fire aspect enchanted book 
look in there as well, along with a couple of Skulk bits and pieces, the Skulk catalysts, and so forth. Now, my next port of call is actually going to be up here on this walkway where the Skulk Shrieker that we spotted is hanging out, because I want to hop up here and see if I can just disable this Shrieker safely without being detected by anything in the neighboring areas and I think that might be the case here so I should be able to just take this out with a silk touch hoe there we go and that one has been diffused successfully that will also allow me to reclaim a bunch of the wool from around here and we don't need to worry too much about being heard by these skulk sensors anymore since they won't alert that shrieker once again we're going to light these up with torches so that it's apparent that we have been this way and I think at this point I can probably come in here pop an orange wool next to that chest just in case we want to come back here for the other enchant books and whatnot and the torch can go on there as well the neighboring room over here i had just noticed does have another skulk shrieker in it so we need to be a little bit careful hop to and fro on our wall blocks here just to make sure that we do not alert this one and let's see what this has around it to alert it it's got a skulk sensor right next to it so we're going to apply a couple more wall blocks here we're going to drop those around the skulk shrieker and I think maybe around some of these sensors as well, just so we can remove the Skulk Shrieker without the sensor hearing us doing that. There we go. I think one of the other ones in the environment heard us doing that because I broke a block underneath. So that's something you need to be aware of. In this case, we didn't end up tripping a Shrieker, so no strikes for us. This chest right here also contains a couple of interesting things. We got some music disc fragments. We got some leggings with mending and protection and a lower level swift sneak book, which could be worth keeping in reserve. Once again, I'm going to pop a wall next to that. We're going to light that up. And it looks like we've reached the edge of the cavern where this ancient city generates. So once again, I'm going to continue lighting up the area around here, checking for shriekers where I can see them. But it looks like this part is currently in the clear. And I think the best way to explore these areas is to do it systematically, whether it's starting in the corridors and then branching out towards the outside, or whether you simply want to comb each quadrant of the ancient city until you've covered the entire thing. But in this case, it looks like we should be able to sneak out over here. There's a few skulk sensors on the ground back here. And if you notice, occasionally there's a skulk block with a couple more starry looking patterns and a slightly brighter texture. That is a skulk catalyst that's hiding in the ground. So we might want to come back and obtain that a little bit later if we're looking to get some more skulk catalysts from the area. We'll pillar up here to check if there are any shriekers in this room beyond. It doesn't look like there are, and I do not spot any other shriekers in this environment. So I think it's safe to walk around. We can hop on down here, place a torch, and check in this chest because, oh, this has got some more riches for us. A Depth Strider Enchanted book. We've got some diamond leggings, which unfortunately have a curse on them. That's a bit of a shame. A bit more amethyst in there as well, and a few more music disc fragments. We are only a couple away from reassembling a full music disc. You've got a few other things in here, some candles. I'll make sure to keep the coal with me. And of course, once again, we can pop an orange block next to that just to keep our system going to say that we have looted this chest already. At this point, my inventory is getting a bit chaotic, so I'm going to turn to one of my empty shulker boxes. I guess we'll use this one, and I'm going to start storing some of the blocks and the skulk stuff specifically in here. And we might start storing loot in this or a different shulker box as well. I think maybe we'll tuck that away in here. And I might continue to remove any skulk sensors from this area so that if I'm exploring later and I don't hear any skulk sensors, I'll know that I'm in the clear to walk around freely and that I don't have to sneak everywhere. Bear in mind though that these skulk sensors and potentially even shriekers can occur in these tiny little cubby holes underneath blocks so just be aware of that when you're exploring this area and don't take anything for granted. Of course our primary goal here is to explore this entire structure avoiding detection by the warden because we really don't want to tangle with the warden at any point it's a pretty tough fight if anything it's going to be something that you have to run away from and if the warden detects you it will listen for vibrations in the same way that the skulk sensors do then it's going to head towards you and the more it hears you the angrier it will get once it's angry with a player it homes in on you and will pursue you so it's a little bit difficult to counter that and if we don't end up encountering it during this raid then we can look into different ways to counter and mess with the warden in future episodes but for now i think we're just going to focus on looting this city 
and exploring it for all of the good stuff it contains. Sneaking up into this structure, which I was fairly confident didn't have any shriekers in, so I was okay placing a torch down here, there is a chest hidden behind this section of deep slate tile walls over here. So I'm just gonna hop over here, probably remove all of these skulk sensors since they are just laying around the place, and you'll notice that this area right here has a bunch of carpet laid down. Carpet will work the same as wool blocks for occluding your footsteps. So if you walk around on this carpet, there are skulk sensors right there that aren't detecting me. So if you are short on resources, if you're short on wool and want a different alternative, you can use carpet, but bear in mind, carpet needs to be placed on some kind of block. Now let's open up this chest and see what we have. A Fortune 3 book is a very good find, along with more Swift Sneak books, which if I added them together with the ones we've already got, would add up to a complete Swift Sneak 3 book. So those are going to be very good to have in reserve, and I'm going to make sure that I add those to my stash in my ender chest. There are a couple of chests over here in the neighboring building as well, but I am less confident that this one has no skulk shriekers around, so I'm going to stick to the wall paths here, and I think I'm going to briefly sneak downstairs and see if any skulk shriekers have made it into the structure here. Doesn't look like they have. No, I'm just hearing a couple of skulk sensors ticking around the outside. So that's fine. This one is all in the clear as well. We have one chest upstairs here, which, ooh, contains a couple of additional music discs. We've got another music disc fragment, a name tag in there as well, and a little bit of extra coal for us. There is a second chest downstairs in this structure, which should be around the corner here. Yep, there it is. And this one contains the other side music disc, which you can otherwise find very rarely in dungeons chests and stronghold chests. We've got a bunch of skulk, a couple of diamond horse armor, which is a nice find, and a very well enchanted hoe, a fortune three hoe. Take that as the jungle sapling leaf breaker. We're going to put that in the cyan shulker box along with our other equipment. And we don't have fortune on that hoe, so that is a brand new one. All that needs is mending and it's a fully enchanted hoe. Oh yeah, I almost forgot. We need to put an orange wool and a torch here to make sure that we know where we have been. You'll also find that some of these wool lined corridors will have these ladders that lead up to the walkway above. And these are not going to lead to you being detected by skulk sensors if you sneak into them because the ladder climbing action does take into account whether or not you are sneaking. Unfortunately, that means you won't be able to sneak down them, and so climbing down a ladder is going to have you detected by any nearby skulk sensors. Something to keep in mind when you're exploring this area. Now, let's take a look at this little section down here. There's a kind of altar down there with a couple of candles nearby and a couple of skulk shriekers. Now, this is another situation in which we want to block off the shriekers so that the sensors nearby will not give us away. Let's sneak down these steps and see if we can get in here and block these off. Now, the thing you'll need to be aware of here is that even if you block off these shriekers on all four sides, the top and bottom faces of the shriekers are also going to be paying attention for any nearby skulk sensor signals. So we need to be a little bit aware of that and we'll probably take out this shrieker first because removing this is potentially going to trip some of the other skulk sensors nearby. We also need to make sure that there aren't any other shriekers hidden around here and those candles almost look like a skulk shrieker from a distance there so I was slightly worried about that. There is also one over there in the corridor so we need to pay attention to that and I don't think we're going to trip anything by removing this one. There we go, okay, we got lucky with that, I think. Moving back up to the catwalk here so that we can see a little bit more of where we're going, I'm going to risk putting a couple of torches down up here, and thankfully that has not alerted any more skulk sensors or shriekers in the area, but we're going to move around here, sprinting and jumping whenever there are gaps in the walkway like so, trying to stay on the wool where we can, and we're going to come around to the front of this structure because this is one of the most fascinating things about these ancient cities and one of the questions about them which remains unanswered. This huge frame of sorts sits in the center of an ancient city. Anytime you explore one of these structures it is going to have one of these and its mouth is wide almost as though to resemble the warden itself but it doesn't actually do anything at the time of this recording. Speculation is rife about whether or not these will present a portal to another dimension in future or some other thing that we can interact with. All we know for now is that the frame is made of an unobtainable block called reinforced deep slate. You cannot collect this, and I believe if you are able to break it with a pickaxe, it simply destroys the block and does not drop anything obtainable. Underneath the portal here, there is a bunch of soul sand burning with a blue flame like you'll find in the soul sand valleys, but there isn't really a great deal else going on 
on this side of the portal. However, you may find occasional anomalies in these structures, like for example over here where a chiseled deep slate has been placed where there isn't one on the opposite side, making it asymmetrical, and that is kind of meant to be a clue, because if you heard that piston move right there, that is the piston that moves when a skulk sensor below there detects your actions. And down here below this portal structure, there is actually a little piston door. So what I'm going to do is quickly pillar up using the wall here. It looks like there aren't any shriekers around. I kind of checked the area as I was coming in, so we don't need to worry about detection here. If we stand on top of this and listen for that piston noise again, we can drop on down here and make our way in via the piston door. There are actually a variety of different mechanisms that can trigger this. One of them will actually listen for the noise of you eating a golden apple or opening a chest up there that contains a golden apple a lot of the time, so there are a couple of different ways to trigger this mechanism. But underneath here, you will actually find a series of... Oh gosh, oh I didn't mean to trigger that, I didn't realise there was a shrieker that close to the portal, oh dear, well that's strike one, isn't it? Anyway, as I was saying, around here there are a bunch of different, like, redstone experiments, basically. Some of these side rooms are empty and don't contain anything, while others, like this one, explain a couple of mechanics of redstone. For example, how the redstone current from this block here can be passed through a solid block by a repeater and will pass a redstone signal out the other side, while this glass block, because it is transparent, does not conduct the redstone power through to the redstone dust on the other side and that lamp won't light up. This is effectively a redstone tutorial area for players who are unclear about the mechanics of certain redstone blocks, and a target block can be demonstrated here, although I'm not going to fire at it because that might trip the same skulk shrieker that I just tripped a few seconds ago. There's also a lectern with a comparator and a lamp there to indicate that if you put a written book in a lectern, the comparator will actually read which page of the book is currently open and can output a redstone signal which can light up that lamp. In here we have an example of a redstone delay clock with a pulse extender made out of several redstone comparators when we flip the switch. All of this lights up and it incidentally reopens the doors over there by the entrance and when we flip that off again, the signal decreases one block at a time, turning the lamps off in sequence until the last lamp switches off and the entire circuit is dark again. Let's also not forget this little section here which shows you how a piston door can work with a decent setup of repeaters and pistons, although I don't believe this design takes into account the redstone quasi-connectivity present on Java Edition where powering the top piston is going to power the piston below. I'm going to break this redstone so that we can come and go as we please, we can step back out into the city here and let's continue exploring for loot. Opposite this giant frame here, you should also find a series of archways that kind of lead through the centre of the city, flanked by pillars on either side. You'll also find some smooth basalt blocks here which are normally the exterior of an amethyst geode. Bear in mind that this walkway will not be covered in wool, so you might need to bring some wool of your own if it's been overgrown with skulk and has the potential for shriekers to notice you. But this area can actually be a great landmark to orient yourself from if you get lost exploring these areas, because the cities are always really large. If your goal is to look for loot though, the majority of the time you're going to find it in the side rooms around here, where the chests have been left near these altars almost as though they are some sort of offering, perhaps to the warden, perhaps to something even more sinister. We're going to bridge over here using our yellow wool once again to mark the direction of travel, and let's see if there are any skulk shriekers around here. It looks like there is just one up here on this balcony. I don't see any others, but I will quickly check the floor around here in case any more have generated on the floor of skulk. No, it looks like this one might be the only one in this area. We should break this, and fingers crossed, we are in the clear. Excellent news. All right, let me grab that real fast. There's a couple of others over there, but they seem far enough away that we should be able to open these two chests without any repercussions. Let me quickly check the floor down here just to make sure we're safe. Yep, I think we are safe. Okay, well, let's check this chest here. That's got a couple more music disc fragments, which means we've completed that music disc. And let's see what's in this chest neighboring it. A Bane of Arthropods 1 book. Oh, that's a little bit sad. Well, one of the other things we've got in here is a brand new item, an Echo Shard. And if we get hold of some of those, we'll be able to use those to craft a Recovery Compass, an item which points to the location of your last death, in case you need to go back there and recover your items. Additionally, these ancient city structures are some of the only places where you can find mob heads out here in the wild. We've talked in the past, of course, about dragon heads. We've got one of those, but we've never held a skeleton skull in this city. 
series before. Like the other mob heads, you can wear it as a helmet, but it doesn't really do anything in the way of protection. However, we will explore a couple of interesting side benefits to a skeleton skull a little bit later in the series. For now, we're going to bridge over to this neighboring room where I did see a skulk shrieker, so I need to be a little bit careful to make sure I don't trip that. Especially since this little room here has a trap of sorts. There are two pressure plates here with two note blocks nearby, and of course, if you step on the pressure plate, that's going to cause the note block to chime, alerting any nearby skulk sensors and shriekers to your presence. This one down here seems like the main thing we have to remove, so let's get rid of that, and fortunately there were no other skulk shriekers nearby, so we are in the clear. We can just get rid of a few of these just so they're not as noisy. And I will draw your attention to the ice blocks around here. We're actually standing above the ancient city ice room, which is a structure that usually generates inside of these cities. I've never known a city to not have one of these. But if you stand on a pressure plate nearby, it will open an iron trap door. And if we descend into here, you'll find an additional loot chest down here, which is usually filled with a couple of supplies, including some snowballs. These are a hint at the fact that if the Warden spawns, you can use projectiles to distract it. It will be drawn to the sound of where a snowball nearby ended up making an impact, and it will be potentially drawn away by that sound so that you can sneak around it. But since we know we're safe in this room for now, I'm going to tuck away all of the other loot that we've gotten from the city so far, and it's time to move on. If we head out this way, we can head back to the wall walkway, from which it looks like there are a couple of basically ruined rooms to either side of the walkway here. There's a lot of shriekers around here, though. I did notice this one up here and I think I'm going to block off this sensor just in case it alerts the shriekers that are lower down. I think I can probably get rid of this one without too much harm befalling me. Yes, there we go. Managed to get away with that one. Now let's see if we can make our way to the shrieker down here and get rid of that one as well. Paying close attention to our surroundings, making sure that there are no other shriekers immediately nearby. Yep, looks like we got away with that one as well. We're doing pretty well, actually. <laughs> I'm going to bridge out to this room over here next to the ice room where I don't see any more shriekers, but I'm going to drop down safely if I... Nope, I did not drop down safely. I thought I was going to place a wall block, and I didn't. So that is, I believe, strike two. And it looks like I wouldn't have been able to do much about that because the shrieker is down there below this block. So that's pretty sneaky placement, if you ask me. I'm going to remove that real fast. And thankfully, there wasn't another Shrieker nearby that was going to be alerted. Fortunately, I was able to remove the Shrieker, though, so we can open up this chest. And we've got a Swift Sneak 3 book, along with another Enchanted Diamond Ho. At this point, you're probably getting a feel for the loot we're getting from this ancient city. It's a bunch of Enchanted books, a couple of Enchanted tools, and some unique items like the Echo Shards and the Music Disc Fragments. Enchanted Golden Apples are obviously very valuable to us as well, but there are a couple of other bits and pieces we could expect to find down here if we are lucky. Ancient cities should have the potential to have not one, but two armor trims down here. So if we are lucky, we might be able to come across at least one of those and potentially both. But of course, loot like that is never guaranteed. So we're just going to take what we can get from this area. And it looks like whatever room might have been here is no longer there. So we just have a couple of skulk shriekers that we need to be concerned about. And I'm going to sneak around to see if there is anything in this room here, because this looks like shrieker central. As far as I can see, there aren't going to be many any ways of blocking all of these off if there is a chest in here that we need to open. And it looks like there is. Okay, so one thing we could try to do is occlude the sound of the chest from anything else in the vicinity by surrounding the chest itself. Looks like there aren't any Skulk Shriekers behind here, so if we build a fairly thick wall of wool around this, Let's use the orange wool for that as well, and let's see if we can block off the sound of this chest opening from anything else in the area. Yeah, there we go, we managed it. And we have the amethyst shards, we have another other side music disc, another music disc fragment for disc 5, but we're doing pretty well at this point. I'm going to put my torch inside of here, and thankfully we've avoided detection by the 1, 2, 3, 4 shriekers that were all stacked up in this area. So I'm going to take my wall blocks and sneak back over to the walkway and we're going to leave this area alone for now. There are of course reasons you might want to leave these individual skulk shriekers where they generated because remember once you've picked these up and placed them elsewhere they don't have the capacity to summon the warden. Only naturally generated shriekers can do that and so it makes the most sense to leave a couple of them around in the event that you would like to summon the Warden in future. If you're not sure exactly why you would want to summon something like the Warden voluntarily, then stay tuned for the future of this series, because we're going to be doing some wacky stuff involving the Warden. I think you guys will like it.
Anyway, the deep dark biome stretches off into the caves beyond, but we have more city to explore, and I'm going to sneak my way up these ladders, head back through to the central frame. We've pretty much explored this quadrant of the city in its entirety, although I just spotted this room over here that looks like we might not have explored it yet, so I'm going to sneak my way over there. I've already spotted a Skulk Shrieker that I need to be aware of, so I'm going to be extra careful as I pillar up here and see if there's anything worth looting inside of here. That looks like it might be, and once again we have a Shrieker directly directly next to a sensor, so I'm going to try and break the Shrieker first. There we go, no other Shriekers detected me. I don't know if there's any more in here. Doesn't look like there is. What about on the other side of this wall? Mm, nope, looks like we're in the clear to open this chest as well. And there it is! We have one of the unique armor trims for the ancient city. We have the Ward armor trim. Very happy that we have found that. We also get another enchanted golden apple. Two enchanted golden apples, in fact, for our efforts. That is wonderful news. Pop down the orange wall, add a torch, and that's going in the ender chest straight away. Way. Very happy that we found that. While we're still exploring, I keep spotting structures that we haven't raided yet, and I don't think there are going to be any Shriekers in this one. From a distance, I didn't see any, so we can pillar on up here, and it looks like there is a cluster of Skulk sensors on this side. Quickly going to check over my shoulder before we open up this chest, and it's worth it because we got some diamond leggings in there, a bunch of glowberries, and a few other bits and pieces, but nothing else too special. With that, we seem to have circled around and come back onto the other side of the area where our dugout chunk is, and we know that there's not any Skulk Shriekers around here, so we can go in here and get another Swift Sneak 3 book. That's fantastic. That's the only loot I wanted from that chest, but of course we can grab anything else in here if we want to. Doesn't look like we have any Shriekers shriekers around here, but you can't be too careful, so I'm going to block off that skulk sensor and a couple more enchanted books, a cursed book as well. That's not all that worthwhile. We can maybe bring the other side disc with us, but I don't really fancy either of those other books. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. I said I was going to head back in towards the central portal frame, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. Now, which way was that? Oh, that might potentially be strike three, although I don't know for how long I have been exploring at this point, and the subtitles can actually give you a clue as to the stage of the warden's anger at you. So if it says Warden approaches, I'm pretty sure that is one of the earlier stages and it's only when Warden draws close pops up that you really need to worry. Now over here on this side we have a tower where I'm going to preemptively put a torch down because it's one of the few places that I can see there isn't a Shrieker around. And we're just going to pillar up to this second layer where it doesn't look like a chest is waiting for us. Is there anything further up here? Maybe towards the top? Ah yes, here we are. There's a chest on the upper level which contains a few goodies. Look at that. Three enchanted golden apples in a single chest and a bunch more echo shards which we've been needing because we don't really have too many many of those yet, and you need eight of them, I believe, for the recovery compass crafting recipe. Let me check that real fast. Yes, you do need eight of them surrounding a normal compass, so that's the reason you find compasses in these chests occasionally, and the reason we need eight echo shards. Also a swift sneak two book, which I guess I will take, and enough music disc fragments to get us over the line for a second music disc fight. So we've been pretty successful in tiptoeing around the ancient city for the last little while, but from this point onwards I'm going to be a little bit more daring about what I do, because frankly I think it's a more entertaining video for you folks if we get to see the warden at least once. So I'm going to break on into this chest over here next to this Skulk Shrieker. We're going to look into that and it's going to be worth it because we have a bunch of enchanted books in here. And there we go, the warden advances. We're hearing the warden coming in there. I'm going to hop down onto a wall block over in this direction and we should be able to get away from that room. But on the other side over here, yep, no, it's definitely going to hear me now. There we go, the warden draws close. That is, I believe, our third third strike and on the fourth the warden should emerge but I think for over here we are basically done there is one more room on this side and there is definitely a skulk shrieker nearby there so we're going to be a little bit careful we want to spawn the warden in a slightly more controlled capacity here but I also want to show you folks what happens when the warden hears you grabbing his stuff so we're going to open this up we're going to take that diamond hoe and now the warden should be coming and it's emerging basically right next to us. So there he is crawling out of the skulk and he's going to start sniffing around for whether or not he can detect us. When the warden starts sniffing it will be able to detect you within a certain range of it and it's going to start making its way towards you. What you mainly want to avoid is it hearing your footsteps so we can use the wall walkways around here to put some distance between us and the warden. At that point the darkness effect that was started by the shriekers and continued by the warden should start to wear off and if you can't hear it sniffing you anymore you will know that you are outside of the radius where it can potentially detect you and it's safe to observe it 
from a distance. Since we are in the heart of the deep dark biome here in this ancient city, the warden isn't going to be distracted by the noises of any other mobs, since nothing else is going to spawn down here that will attract it. It's just going to wander around fairly aimlessly for now, still trying to search for a player, but it's not going to inflict you with that darkness effect unless it gets closer, which unless it sniffs you or hears your footsteps is going to happen by sheer chance. Sounds like it's trying to sniff me out though and it may be coming around that corner in a second. I am just kind of curious to see what movements it is making and there we go. It sounds like the Warden has now dug away into the Skulk again. So I'm glad we all got that out of our systems. We managed to have an encounter with the Warden and survive. And it's really just about putting enough distance between yourself and the Warden. If the cavern roof is high enough, for example over here where we have a slightly higher ceiling to account for the taller structures, you can even pillar up 20 or so blocks and that should put you outside of the range of the Warden's detection or any of the long range attacks it has. From which point if you are daring enough you can fire down on it with a bow and if you are certain that you're outside of the range of its sonic boom attack then you might be able to deal enough damage to kill the warden yourself. But honestly I don't recommend trying that on your first visit to an ancient city it's much better saved for when you have a little bit more experience with these places. Speaking of experience one of the things that you should experience is this room here in more or less the center of the cities it's kind of off to one side in this case but you'll often find that there are these piles of wool in kind of Minecraft Stevie colors. <laughs> these are blue cyan and light blue blocks of wool that you will find somewhere inside the ancient city and can be used as a sort of top up of sorts for if you've started to run out of any wool that you've brought with you or alternatively can be a great place to grab some wool if you don't have them already. But another really interesting detail of these is that if you break away a bunch of the blocks around here you'll notice that this deep slate has actually been formed into a staircase and there's actually carpet and stuff around here so this is more or less I believe if you yeah if you break out one of these wool blocks you find a campfire there is this notion that this area has been used as a campsite and whether that's happened before or after the ancient city is here remains to be seen but it's kind of an interesting facet of these areas how there is effectively this collapsed in wool tent that has a table in the middle and a campfire to one side. Let's make our way in that direction and see if there are any other side rooms that we haven't investigated for their loot yet, because I'm still holding out hope that we find that second armor trip. Okay, this one here, definitely a huge trap because we've got two Skulk Sensors and two Shriekers right there, so I definitely feel like this is one where we have to block off the chest so they don't hear me opening it. Hopefully that should be enough. Yep, there we go. We tripped one sensor on the outside, but honestly it wasn't worth it because there's nothing much in this chest that I want. Looks like over in this direction, the city ends there. So let's quickly check this chest. I don't believe there are any Skulk Shriekers around here. Nope, I definitely just tripped the sensors by sprinting for a second there. There we go. We should have a decent handful of Echo Shards now. I don't know if it's quite enough to make a recovery compass, but we are getting close. Need to be a little bit careful of this Shrieker down here that's positioned right next to a skulk sensor just gonna take that one out no others nearby sounds good and we have one up on the second floor of this structure where a couple more chests are going to have generated so i might as well pillar up and check that if there aren't any more we can get rid of this one crossing my fingers and we're good okay thank goodness for that right now let's see if we have a second chest up here on this floor which we do Okay, that's our Echo Shards, definitely made our quota on those. Loads of glow berries and another fortune efficiency and this time mending diamond hoe. That's kind of wild. Eight Echo Shards is a pretty good total. We have so many enchanted books and stuff at this point as well. We've got all of these swift sneak books and the Unbreaking 2 I actually want to keep because my netherite hoe actually only had Unbreaking 2 this entire time. And finally, having disabled the Shriekers, we can make our way down to the bottom floor here where there is another chest waiting for us and that's got another two enchanted golden apples, an infinity book, and a hoe with Curse of Vanishing, which I'm probably going to leave here because we've got enough hoes by this point and I don't need one that disappears on me. And at this stage, looking at my surroundings, I'm fairly confident that we've made a pretty thorough sweep of this ancient city, but I'm still finding occasional little side buildings internal structures here and there that we haven't explored yet so we're going to sneak up on this one but this may be the last one that we actually need to loot and at this point i don't think there are any shriekers around so i'm going to throw caution to the wind and just open it up and unfortunately it doesn't contain any armor trims or anything else that we are still looking for so that is pretty much it 
for this area, I believe. Is this central tower structure still one that we have not explored? It looks like it because there's a shrieker right there. Let me see if I can disable this one so we don't have to tangle with the warden one more time. And let's make our way up this tower to see if one more loot chest awaits us at the pinnacle. I see it up here. What's it got for us? Barely anything, unfortunately. Well, what a shame. Well, folks, looking around, it looks like we've made a pretty decent thorough sweep of this area. And look at me, I'm just dropping off these things now. I'm pretty sure that we have done everything we came here to do. So we're going to head back through to the center of our fabulously dug out chunk here. And we can take a quick look around this city from here. You can see the path of light that we have drawn throughout this place, making sure that we know everywhere we have been and I'm fairly certain that that is absolutely everywhere inside of this city. Now of course we do have an ancient city underneath the mountain near us and we can go and explore that at a later date but what incredible loot we have found. We've gotten basically half a box of enchanted books. I haven't had enough room to fit them all in here. We've got a bunch of enchanted golden apples. We're adding two more to that number. Enough echo shards to make a recovery compass. Enough music disc fragments to make two more music discs aside from the other side music discs that we found in here. A bunch more diamond tools and a skeleton skull for the first time in the series. Considering that we started this episode looking at a shulker box of riches, I think it makes sense that we end the episode looking at a shulker box of riches as well. So folks, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Minecraft Survival Guide. I do hope you've enjoyed the episode and best of luck if you go looking for the ancient cities yourselves. Thank you so much for watching the Minecraft Survival Guide. My name has been Pixorifs. Don't forget to leave a like on this episode if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you want to see more and I'll see you folks soon. Take care. Bye for now.